Portland State University awards honorary degrees to acknowledge individuals who have achieved outstanding scholarship or artistic accomplishments or performed distinguished public service during their lifetime. I am so pleased today to present an honorary doctoral degree of humane letters to Oregon Teacher of the Year and a leading voice in American educational equity, Brett Bigham. Mr. Bigham received his Bachelor's of Science degree in communications from Oregon State University and then earned a Master's of Science degree in special education and teaching here at Portland State. Mr. Bingham has made exceptional contributions to the children of the state of Oregon, advocating on the behalf of people with disabilities and the LGBTQ communities. In doing so, he has also made exceptional personal sacrifices. During his year of service as an Oregon Teacher of the Year, he was told by a supervisor that if he said publicly that he was gay, he would be fired. Following the White House honoring ceremony, Mr. Bingham spoke up as an openly gay teacher advocating for the rights of LGBTQ youth. He was subsequently fired. His fight to retain his job and his rights to free speech were included in a Supreme Court amicus brief by the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now an elementary special education teacher in a different district, Mr. Bingham has written over 170 ability guidebooks published from more than 40 countries. He is a recipient of the National Education Association Award for Excellence and is an NEA Foundation Global Learning Fellow. Good evening, graduates, President Percy, and the faculty of Portland State University. I am honored to be here this evening. For the past months, years, and for some of our PhD candidates, decades, you have been working towards this moment. I am so proud to spend it with you. But in typical 2020s fashion, even your graduation is unique. You step into a world that didn't exist when you started this journey. The world may no longer fit the dreams that you had on that first day at PSU. And you may be wondering if you will have any impact in this crazy new world. You might be asking if one little graduate can make a difference in 2021. While I've sat where you were sitting, I asked those same questions and I have an answer for them. You have no idea of the impact you are going to have. I want to tell you a little story. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, or a few years ago in East Portland, I ran a classroom for amazing students who just happened to have some profound and pretty severe disabilities. I taught at the county level, and I only saw a student if the local school districts could not handle their needs. I worked with five paraprofessionals, and we were an incredibly hardworking set of educators. And we started realizing that our work was bigger than our classroom. Many special education students stay in school until the age of 21, and we decided our graduates deserved a prom. The first year, it was just our class, but the next year, we invited students from a couple of other districts. Each year, it grew and grew until we had students coming from as far away as Salem and Rainier. The Oregonians showed up one year for their prom issue, and the next day, the entire state opened their papers to find my girls in their prom dresses and their wheelchairs looking absolutely beautiful. And the next year, the Rose Festival princesses came and NPR showed up and suddenly the entire country got the message. All your graduates deserve a prom. Look here to Portland, we'll show you how it's done. That same year, I put a series of books I had made online. For some of my autistic students, it was incredibly hard to face new situations. Field trips were a nightmare. So I created a series of support books called Ability Guidebooks. If we were going to ride the tram, I went the week before and created a book called I'm Going Up on the Portland Tram. And soon, my students, who had had a very hard time going anywhere, started responding. One student especially needed my help. The year before she had come to my program, she had been sent home 34 times for self-injurious behavior. She would violently hit herself in the face every time she had to go to a new place. Our first two field trips with her ended with blood, tears, and a burning desire to change this girl's life. Now usually, a teacher sees gradual improvement with setbacks and losses, but not this time. It worked. She melted down 34 times the year before I got her, and after introducing the books, she had one meltdown in three years. 
I later made, later made a book for the family to go to vacation to Hawaii in an airplane, and it worked. The kid who couldn't go to the mall when I met her now has a job and she travels. And then it kind of clicked. How many students around Portland could use these books? How many teachers, how many adult autistic people were trapped in group homes because leaving their safe place for the, for the unknown was terrifying? I put the books online. I was just sharing, but sharing can impact lives. Sharing is like dropping a stone into calm water. Your act of kindness can create a ripple effect, touching life after life as it moves out away from you. In 2014, I was the first special education teacher to be named the Oregon State Teacher of the Year. I was the first Oregon special education teacher to be chosen as the National Education Association Foundation's Educator of Excellence. That year, I was honored at the White House by President Barack Obama, and Dr. Jill Biden invited me to her house for lunch. From the outside, my life looked pretty amazing, but I was also hiding some very dark secrets. A few minutes after giving my very first speech as Teacher of the Year, my supervisor called me on the telephone. I thought she was going to congratulate me, but what she said was, you had better shut your mouth. If you say you are gay in public, someone is going to shoot you in the head. I mean it, someone is going to kill you. I was called into her office soon after, and I was given a new set of directives. I was no longer allowed to speak any words publicly or privately without getting her permission first. I could no longer write anything unless I had her permission. This included personal mail, and I was ordered that I would bring all personal mail from home for her to open and read. It was under these conditions that I found myself standing just outside the White House being interviewed by the International Press Corps. They asked if we wanted to make a statement for our students. My hands started shaking, my soul started shaking, and an image came to my mind that was so clear, it was like a photograph. When I was 15, my best friend came out to me. He told me he would never date another woman. I was a kid, but I did my best to console him and I watched him right away on his motorcycle, getting smaller and smaller, and I kept waving in case he looked back. I wanted him to know that I saw him. That was almost 41 years ago, and to this day when someone I love says goodbye, I will watch them until they disappear from view, because you never know if you will see them again. My funny, lovely friend Mark came out to me, went home, and killed himself. So I stood at the steps of the White House, rocking back and forth, thinking of my friend who saw no future for himself because he never saw a future that he fit into. He never saw an openly gay teacher of the year to show him a possible future. He never saw a champion who was willing to put up a fight for a hurt, lonely, gay kid. Pardon me, ladies, I said to the two teachers in front of me, I am coming out of the closet, and I stepped up to that White House microphone, and I came out swinging. I told the whole world I was a gay teacher. I told the whole world that our LGBT youth were being harmed by anti-gay laws. And I said a lot of things, but the message to those kids was simple and clear. You are not alone. When I returned to Oregon, it was all at war with my district. A few weeks later, though, gay marriage became legal in Oregon, and Mike and I headed for City Hall to get our license. And I knew the press followed my Facebook account, so I put up a very short and sweet message. I'm getting married today. By the time we got to City Hall, the press was waiting. There were more TV crews than we could count, and we ended up doing our vows on live television. That night, the Oregonian had 45 pictures of our day on their website. Under the headline, Teacher of the Year Weds His Longtime Partner. A few weeks after that, Mike and I became the first gay couple to ever be honored by riding in the Portland Rose Festival Grand Floral Parade. For half a day, we sat on the back of a shiny and very slippery black convertible, waving at 400,000 people as another half million watched on live TV. 
and every few blocks, these giant speakers were set up, announcing the floats. And as we waved to the crowd, as local newscasters introduced the Oregon Teacher of the Year, and riding with him is his husband. The district decided to make an example out of me. They fired me. And they thought that would be the end of it. But they were very, very wrong. And as I sat wondering what to do, a friend texted me and said, look up your name, spelled wrong with an N, and the country Nigeria. I pulled up Google, and I was surprised to see the new Nigeria Times article. Under a picture of Mike and I in the parade was the story of a gay teacher fighting back. Along with that was a photo of our wedding. And suddenly, any sadness I had was washed away. I would miss my students, but in Nigeria, they are executing gay people. And suddenly, on that day, when LGBT people in Nigeria opened up their papers, they got to see a possible future. And that's when the union brought in their lawyer. Now, do you want to know why you joined the union? I'll tell you why. Because it comes with a free lawyer. And not just any lawyer, a shark lawyer. And she wasn't just a shark lawyer, she was a Sharknado lawyer. She ate my district alive. She was merciless. She ripped those district lawyers to shreds. She scared them so much that the district immediately fired the superintendent and reinstated me to my position. We kept cleaning house, and within months, the entire administration of my district would be gone. They were all fired, reprimanded, or fled. The head of HR and the supervisor who threatened me were so reviled, they changed their names just so they could get jobs and the city of Portland would finish up the job by voting out enough board members to force the district to clean up. Now in June of last year, the Supreme Court ruled on a landmark LGBT work discrimination case. They ruled that gay people have a right to work without being treated differently. And buried in that case was a little tiny amicus brief by the Southern Poverty Law Center. And that brief told my story. My story was the example of what can go terribly, terribly wrong for LGBT employees. When I saw the Supreme Court ruling, I turned to Twitter to vent, and I wrote a string of tweets to explain what the experience had been like. I didn't hold my punches. I let people see that champions bleed. I let them see that wounds don't always heal. And as usual, I underestimated the impact my words would have. My husband, Mike, was in a virtual meeting later when a coworker told him, your husband is trending on Twitter. We opened Twitter and I got a message, and another, and another, over 100 messages in one minute. The same thing was happening on Facebook, Imgur, Instagram, Reddit, and in less than two days, my Twitter account hit 40 million impressions. Messages from young people started pouring in, thousands of them, Lonely kids from small corners of conservative America. Teenagers in strict Muslim countries who feared for their very lives. And some of these kids were drowning. They were praying that someone would throw them a lifeline. For months, I, that's all I did, throw lifelines. Send love and hope and, phone num and the phone number for the Trevor Project. I saved a life, I hope. And that was my hope all along. One kid like my friend Mark. Saving one kid would make it all worth it. When President Percy asked me to speak here today, the honor was immense. When I learned I would be receiving an honorary PhD, I was astonished. I'm no longer just that nice teacher that won a nice prize. I'm a social justice warrior. I have learned I will say what has to be said. I may not be a very safe person to give the microphone to. And yet here I am trying to share with you what it means to work in education, showing you that the word champion is the same word as teacher. And I promise that every single day, you will impact kids in ways you do not know, see, or understand. And speaking of understanding, I hope you've figured out my hidden message in this speech today. It's the lake, you see, because the lake, it's not a lake, the lake is your student. The rock you dropped is a side hug 
or a kind word, or teaching someone to read, or by being the principal who knows everyone's name, and more importantly, knows what kids didn't get breakfast. Those are the ripples that will be moving through that child for the rest of their lives. The lessons you teach and the love you share become a part of every single child who sits in one of your desks. And even after you've reached a ripe old age, even after you've retired and your teaching days are long past, those ripples you made will still be moving across the lake. Thank you, President Percy and Portland State. Thank you for the honorary PhD. It shows me my work has had impact and it shows me the fight was a good fight. But thank you most of all to the graduating class. Thank you for allowing me to take your last moments as a student and to let me do what I do best. Tonight, I took my pebble and I dropped it into the lake that is the graduating class of 2021. Let the ripples begin. <laughs>